If you know me, then you know I absolutely adore the Sega Saturn. I always wanted one growing up from the first time I tried one at a friend's house in the late 90s, but I wasn't able to fully call one my own until about two years ago. In that time, I've tried to play as many games on the platform as I could, and looked online to read forum posts, look at articles, and watch videos about the best games and hidden gems on the platform. I found myself seeing a lot of titles listed time and time again, and decided to dig a bit deeper in the library. That's what brings us to today's video. I'm here to present 10 hidden gems that I've enjoyed on the Saturn. My criteria for my picks are as follows. 1. The game must be something I've rarely seen mentioned. 2. It's something I've put a few hours into. And 3. It must be playable for someone who only understands English. So with that loose criteria out of the way, let's hop into 10 hidden gems on the Saturn that I enjoy. The first game we're going to talk about today is Ninpen Manmaru. And hopefully I said that right, a lot of these games are Japan exclusives and I really struggle speaking like Japanese names, so forgive me. This is one of the few 3D platformers on the console, and this one is an absolute blast. You play a penguin and you need to platform around these fairly well designed levels. After a few levels you'll face a boss, and these bosses are usually less of fights, and they're more like collecting coins in a race or avoiding their attacks for a couple of minutes to win, and then you just kind of go on to the next world. Uh, there are these super cute little cutscenes that can pop up, and while I have no idea what is being said, I'm still able to somewhat follow along. The difficulty curve is excellent as well. World 1's an absolute cakewalk, and it really gets you comfortable with the mechanics before amping things up in World 2. By World 3, this game's gonna think you're ready to tackle some difficulty, and does it get difficult. You'll need precise triple jumps and quick thinking. It's a very rewarding game. The only potential negatives I can say is that the controls for the game have aged very poorly. It's full on tank controls which can be very hard to work with these days. And the other is that this game is very short. Even with the difficulty, it's hard to imagine it would take a seasoned platform player more than 4 or 5 hours to get through this one. If you can look past that, Ninpen Manmaru is a wonderful little game to try out. This next game really made me geek out when I saw it existed. For the longest time I thought Saturn only had Fire Pro in your house and WrestleMania Arcade for wrestling games? Man was I wrong. Say hello to All Japan Pro Wrestling featuring Virtua. If you're a fan of mid-90s All Japan, then this is the game to pick up. It's actually absurd I didn't hear more about this one. The roster is excellent. You have some Virtua Fighter guest characters, sure, but this game also has Kobashi, Misawa, Giant Baba, Akiyama, Stan Hansen, and so many more. Uh, the matches are long and feel like absolute battles. The controls are tight, Move sets are on point, everything about this game just drew me in and I'm so happy to have spent time with it. If you're a fan of 90s All Japan, this is a must play. I'd also highly recommend looking at a moveset guide, that'll just kind of give you a grasp of everything, so I'm going to link that in the description. Uh, I may be overhyping this game, but honestly, I don't care. I love this one, any game with Kobashi and Masawa will get all the love from me. Now let's take a look at Drift King Shitoko Battle 97. Honestly, there isn't much to say about this one. It's a highway racing game with an emphasis on drifting. Uh, is this the best racing game on the Saturn? Not by a long shot. But for some reason, I was drawn to it. Maybe it's the cheesy FMVs where it looked like the developers of the game were being held hostage to say a few things. Or maybe it's just the fact that it reminds me so much of one of my favorite Dreamcast games known as Tokyo Extreme Racer. Honestly, I cannot pinpoint what I love about this one but I just find it very enjoyable doing these long, 5 plus minute long races on the highway, dodging traffic, and attempting to make these drifts work. It's a super basic game from what I've played so far, but it has something special to it, I just cannot pinpoint what it is. Pinball games are awesome. Thankfully the Saturn has quite a few. One I'd love to bring up right now is Digital Pinball Necronomicon. This game instantly hits you with some awesome music by John Petrucci of Dream Theater fame, with one cool ass opening FMV. The game lets you pick from one of three tables that all feel fairly great to play. None of the tables are really that insane in terms of design, but that's okay, because the theming and overall gameplay is just excellent. If you're someone into pinball, this is a must play. It's just overall superb music, on top of solid gameplay, on easy to pick up and play tables. There's so much to love with this one. Definitely a good game to kill an afternoon if you're a pinball fan. Can you really do a top 10 Saturn list without a shmup? I mean, you probably can, but this list was really asking for Game Tengoku, the game paradise. This is just such a charming shmup. Bullets were flying and destroying my ship non-stop. 
but on my first playthrough, I just could not stop smiling. The general idea is that you're fighting against like these arcade machines, and you have like anime girls and crane games throwing stuffed animals at you, or there's like a killer pinball table, or maybe like you're flying your ship above like a racing game track. It's all really absurd, but it's so engaging. There are a few characters to pick from, and while this is no Don Pachi or sexy Proteus even, this game should appeal to casual and hardcore shmup players alike. Between its seemingly infinite continues and rather high difficulty, going for the near perfect run is going to be tough, but if you want something cute to play that you should surely be able to finish and feel like a change of pace from your usual shmup on the Saturn, this is an excellent one to check out. Saturn is full of awesome fighting games, but did you know that Atlas has one on the console as well? Groovon Fight Goketsuji Chizuko 3 is its name, and that was such a hard title for me to even try to pronounce, hopefully I got it right. But it's a 2v2 focused fighter with a pretty awesome looking roster, the gameplay is smooth and exactly what you'd expect from a 2D fighting game. This does require a ram cart? which I found to be kind of odd, because honestly, the animations are nothing to write home about. In fact, the graphical style of this one took a long time to grow on me. But now I'm fairly into it, and it's one I'll throw on if I feel like mixing it up for my typical Street Fighter Zero 3 pick. You can also totally pick up your knocked out teammate and throw them at your opponent, which I found to just be so cool and I had to point it out. Like, it's just awesome. Definitely give Groovon Fight a look if you haven't. Okay, so here's a game I heard some rumblings about, and I only just started it the other day, but I'm already hooked. It's a game from Hudson called Willy Wombat. I went in not knowing what to expect, and so far I've been treated to these fantastic levels that all flow well. They have a fair degree of challenge, and a ton of things to find just hidden away. The game may be a Japan exclusive, but all the cutscenes are in English, and I just love everything about the presentation of this one. At first the camera angle was tricky to get used to, but as you play and get accustomed to how you can spin the camera, and how to aim your shots and jumps, it just works. This one really is a hell of a gem. Do you remember how I said pinball games are awesome, and how Saturn had quite a few when I was covering Necronomicon earlier? Well, I'm about to add another one to the list right now. Fantastic Pinball Kyutenkai has so much style and such gorgeous animation. This game is definitely video game pinball at its best. It doesn't try to be like a real pinball table at all. So many events on the table can trigger, you have different classes that you can play, there are these like cool mini games that can pop up on occasion, and the physics of the table just feels so good. It's satisfying being on the bottom level of the table, and like you just shoot your ball all the way up into the heavens. Like it's just so cool. Everything that happens in this one is absolute madness in the best possible way. If you like some less realistic pinball, then like the title of this game implies. This is fantastic pinball. This one might cause people to kind of scratch their heads. Batman Forever the Arcade Game. I know this game isn't really discussed as being anything beyond okay, and quite a few people really don't like this one, but it definitely clicks with me. It's chaotic at all times, and you could do a lot worse for a beat-em-up in my opinion. The difficulty this one is all over the place, and it's so hard to keep track of where you are and what's even happening, but after a while, you just kind of zone in and become the Batman. You just kind of throw batarangs at the baddies, take down helicopters, and you just swing around taking out four or five, six or even more enemies in one smooth motion, and it just brings so much satisfaction. It's sort of like going to a video rental store back in the day, and you get one of those low-budget horror movies. You know it's not going to be great, but you sure as hell know you're going to have a good time with it, and that's what Batman Forever is to me. It's not this bastion of excellent design, but I can't help but turn this one on every few months to try a few runs. It's just so fun, and to me that's what matters. The last game I'm going to talk about today is one of my personal favorites, Gale Racer. It's an arcade style racer where you get an invitation to join a race called the Saturn Rally, where you'll be driving from Los Angeles all the way to New York. It's a fun concept, but I won't lie, it doesn't quite hit the mark because almost none of the stages really feel like the cities that they're supposed to represent. But if you can look past that in the game's terrible draw distance, which you can quite clearly see on the screen, you're met with a very solid racing game that will take a while to master, but gives you a good sense of progressing through this huge epic race. It's a checkpoint racer, so you need to complete these long roads ahead of you within a certain time limit or it's game over. As you play, you'll have to try and not get run off mountains by a semi-truck, 
use your lights and wipers in less than ideal conditions, and dodge all this incoming traffic. It's such a fun little title, and also an excellent one to bring the 3D controller out for. In the footage, I'm using just the standard 6-button controller, which made things very difficult. But with the 3D controller, this game is an absolute dream. And it's definitely one for racing fans to check out. I absolutely love this game. It's one of my favorites on the console. Okay, and that's going to do it for this video here. Those are my picks for some nice hidden gems to check out on the Saturn. I know a lot of these were very much oddball picks, but that's kind of what I want to go for here. Just want to focus on games that maybe aren't really focused on all too much, and hopefully I did a good job with that. I genuinely enjoy all the games I featured here, and hopefully you found something new to maybe check out on the Saturn, or if not, maybe you found some of these games to be kind of cool to see featured. But, you know, if you're watching this and you can think of like any kind of like really obscure hidden gems on the Saturn, put them in the comments or something. Would love to see if there are like any more that I haven't given a shot yet, and maybe I'll make another one of these lists at some point. But uh, thank you all very much for watching.